Well, hello, birdies. We have a special treat for you today. I am here with the very incredible, <laughs> understated and gorgeous and quite captivating oh Grace God. Brennan. Hi, everyone. I just don't want to oversell you too early. But... <laughs> 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 Who is also the founder of Buy From The Bush. Um, if you haven't heard of it yet, then just get your phones out and be quickly looking it up <laughs> right now. Um, and she tells a very good yarn. And um, so thank you for coming to Yarn No, thanks for having me. My goodness. I'm, I've I'm just had the best tour of this business and I'm quite excited to be here. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're very excited to have you, <laughs> as you can see by all the fuss we've made. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, where we could start because we're in the bush here. Yes. Um, and while we... I feel like I know you a little bit, but we we actually haven't had a lot of time to, to chat. I, I, I see that, you know, I don't know that I've come across someone that's more passionate about the bush in the little bit of time that I've got to know you. So when did this love affair start with the bush? Like when, when did you fall in love with it? Um, it's so funny because haven't you met people more passionate? Like I feel like bushies <laughs> are the most passionate people about the bush. You haven't met my well, husband. You're, you're talking, You, I, I guess, I don't know. You found, you found a way but to I, be able to... Yeah, I think I fell in love with a man, my husband, and then by extension fell in love with his country. And um, he is from a place called Warren, which you know, but northwest of Dubbo. And it's kind of the western plains of New South Wales. It's just flat country and it's quite unique or quite distinctive, I should say. Yeah. Um, and his dad and his uncles, and they all kind of, I suppose, imparted their little gems. Um, they see things that I don't even see and like if we're going somewhere if I'm going somewhere with Jack or if he's directing me to say he's giving me directions and he might say like you know you just got the sandy ridge and then you'll see the like you'll <laughs> oh see the, no yeah I'm like you <laughs> mean the where the stunning kind of mansion <laughs> is with the tennis court like I see things so differently so um I think I fell in love with the country because I was kind of getting to know my husband now um, and so you didn't you didn't grow up in the country though no sorry I grew up in Sydney yeah, and but I did have cousins in the country. I went yeah, for holidays. Yeah. I did like we love Still country music. All the time. Yeah, and so I mean, where did it? Like I'm, I think I'm not more passionate than other people, but I am determined to, um, to sell all the incredible things about the bush to people who may not know. So maybe I come off as like a. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I feel like a fraud because I'm actually from the city. I've only lived in Warren for 10 years, but I've always loved, I think there's something uniquely Australian about life in the country. And um, I think you can kind of tap into something really special if you spend some time there and meet people in the bush and you know, connect with small communities. Well, yeah, so just talking of tapping into something really special. <laughs> so I think it was October last year, you, you started a little Instagram page. and. Yeah. They talk about how things, you know, spread like wildfire in bush, which I don't know if it's appropriate now to actually say that given good that point. we had the bush fire. Shivers, good point. Um, but this thing really did go crazy, you know. But it was just a little page from the, you know, kitchen in Warren. And yeah. then I think by Christmas you had 400,000 people, you know, following this thing. And what is it that captivated this this audience and, and, and captured, the, I guess, the imagination of so many? Um. I think I've spent some time thinking about this, obviously, because it did <laughs> do something I never expected it to do. Yeah. But um, I think for a couple of reasons, for people who don't know Buy From The Bush, it was it was about, um, it was re in response to severe drought in my region and across yeah. New South Wales and parts yeah. of Australia. And I wanted to shed light on drought in a way that maybe the media wasn't doing. So, you know, I remember being in my office and, um, and talking with people with people in town about how the media were covering drought and like, the, yeah. you know, who are these people that they're interviewing? They, they, that does not reflect our yeah, perspective, yeah. Um, which was very much, you know, self-pity and um, and things were hopeless and there was, you know, which is not necessarily the case in, you know, yeah. in amongst severe drought, people were doing all sorts of innovative things to try and um, get through and actually build business and, you know, take all these learnings from, from the situation and not to mention they had planned for cycles of drought through you know they, they're used to it so to s the media was kind of covering it in a pretty 2d way yeah. and also um things were 
getting critical in my small town. So people were moving away, businesses were closing. Um, I think hope was evaporating and it, there was this feeling like, what are we doing here? If we can't do what we love, which is agriculture, and if we can't run a small business and people aren't coming through the doors, like why do we live so far from services, isolated, you know, all those things. So um, it was just an idea to connect small business in the bush to city audiences, new consumers, kind of create that direct line and social media seemed like a, a really simple way of doing it. So what captivated people, I think it might have been just a, a really simple call to action, a simple yeah. way of helping. Yeah. There were there was a critical need, people needed cash flow in communities and they also needed kind of this injection of positivity and help um, hope, I suppose, but also feeling visible because it can be quite, like you would know, it can be quite, um, you can feel quite outside the kind of mainstream um, discussion in, in policy and also kind of culture mm -hmm. in Australia if you live outside the major cities and regional centres. So this is such a long-winded answer. But <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. But I do think it was like here's a, here's a way to help help. Yes. And also they discovered these incredible businesses and these incredible products and, oh, my God, yeah, I'll help because I love Why that. Why wouldn't I want that? Yeah, I want Christmas that handbag. Tree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was Christmas and it's fun to spend at Christmas. So Yeah, and it, it seemed to have meaning for, you know, these yeah, people that they, to know the story behind them. That's right. I reckon, it, I mean, that's that's happening everywhere, isn't it? People don't want to just kind of consume meaningless consumption. They want, yeah. you know, to spend with purpose. Yeah. yeah, and they want to connect with story. And that's, I mean, it's, maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it's kind of, making too grand a notion of what I was actually doing, which was sharing content on social media. But what I wanted to do was kind of shed light on it, on the hustle that was happening and like all yeah. this incredible energy and, and, and business um, acumen that was in the bush just needed to connect to a new audience. And I mean, they just really connected with that story. And if you look mm -hmm. at the actual numbers, I think um, from what I read, it was, it was over four months or yes. four months and it was it, the impact was five million dollars worth of sales going out to these regional and small businesses yeah which are mostly run by women you know 96 percent yeah. run by women so this is this is powerful and I, I guess they're the numbers but then there's the yeah the behind the scenes are there any sort of anecdotes or stories that you know just hit you and you were like whoa this is this was giving me purpose <laughs> yeah exactly I think because what would happen inevitably was we would share a post yeah. and then that business, um, I mean, some of them were really sophisticated businesses already doing well, yeah. but lots of them were, um, they may only have an Instagram account, so they wouldn't yeah. have an e-commerce platform. And they, yeah. so we would share a post and they would get, like people were getting up to 5,000 new followers, which who uh, cares really about social media followers, except if you're running a small business, that's 5,000 potential long-term customers in yeah. your business and they've suddenly got this new audience and what I've seen is the energy that that's injected into them so yeah. there's all these cool collaborations happening between the bush businesses and um their Instagram feed is is like going from okay yeah I'll, I'll do you know I'll do it because I know I'm meant to do it to this really inspirational um like it's it's quite inspiring to see what you know um how these small businesses have leveraged the opportunity of buy from the bush yeah but also hearing from people, like I got a message um, one day, I mean, there's so many, I'm going to not do it justice, but I got a message from a lady who um, had, she said she was a, she was just crying at her kitchen bench. And um, I think, I mean, I every small business owner knows what it feels like when somebody right. thinks what you're doing is cool and shares it, yeah. like, you know. But in this case, she had launched a fashion line and... Um, and when you do that, I mean, it's a huge investment yeah, and there's so much risk. Up, yeah, yeah you, <laughs> exactly. You would know better than anybody. And um, within, you know, a couple of days she'd sold out. But just those first pings on her phone oh, when, you know, the sales started coming yeah. through and they were in the midst of drought, obviously. And this and was, effect yeah, well. she said, you know, it was it was really keeping her lights on and, and water in the tank. And yeah, and then there were others who um, were able to scale their business as a result of that injection of cash flow. So yeah, long-term impact as, a, as well as just that critical injection of cash when they needed it most. Yeah. So, I mean, it's interesting, um, you know, because we, we, we now have a few things in common. <laughs> we went to married champagne. farmers, champagne. <laughs> um, we have both lived through drought in the last couple of years, probably. Mm. I'm not sure that, you know, for the mayor has been in drought the last two years. Yes. Because, you know, got all that sheep on a gistman and luckily there's been rain, so that's... yeah. A blessing, but I, I love the way 
when you talked about this initiative and how people could get involved, it wasn't about charity and it was about investment in regional Australia and, and that's really what connected connected people. I and think so, yeah. Ultimately, I mean, you know, for the, for the businesses that you've helped, they've, you know, really um, been able to flourish and thrive and then, you know, the... Um, the the people that engaged in it, which included me, I bought all my Christmas cards. <laughs> oh, great. So that was great. Um, and, you know, lots of other things actually I've discovered and gone, oh, I want that. I mean, we're happy, you know, yeah. that you've helped us discover all these incredible, oh, you know, uh, uh, artisans and, yeah. you know, makers and talent out in the bush. So we're all happy. In the middle, you know, really, you've been volunteering your time. This is the thing that's fascinated me actually <laughs> about the whole thing. I'm like, wow, Grace is giving a lot to this. You know, what has been driving you through all of that? Because ultimately, you know, yeah. there's this... There's... Well, I didn't know it was going to take up quite as much time, <laughs> as it has. time and energy. I, um, but I think most people would yeah. do what I did mm. if they knew it was yeah. having... Well, if I mean, um, I do. I, re I really believe that. I think if you know... Most people just want to help, but they yes. but they don't necessarily know how. And this happened to work, um, and it had immediate impact. And the more impact okay. I saw, of course, that drives you. And I had a husband um, who, like, we had this interesting conversation early on, where because he was in the he was in the midst of pretty sh you know pretty ordinary time, and um, he'd come in from the paddock, kind of tired, and and the house would be despicable, and the kids would be messy, like. Nothing was getting how done. Many, how many children, by the way? Just, I've now you got know, four Because you've kids. got heads to spare time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did have three kids and I was pregnant. But um, she's it was... She's here. This... She's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, but I think, like, I, we had this conversation where I said, you, can, you, can you be okay with everything else in our lives being chaos? Because I really think this is important. And um, <laughs> and I had to get his consent, and then he yeah. kind of bought in as well, and, yeah, and helped it's so quite a lot. That that it happens, in fact, he it? said, "Yeah, I'll let you do that." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no don't let me help me, please." Yeah, um, want so me it wasn't throw me out. Yeah, there. Exactly. Tell me, go for it. Was it was quite a funny moment. Yeah. But um, you know, I think what the hell was the question? I think most <laughs> people would help. I, I also think that um, like what drove me was impact. So yeah. so I, 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 as soon as it was. If I turned it into something commercial, immediately all the decisions have to be a little bit more measured. Like you are angling more, like you have to project something and position your business. Whereas it was just this open, beautiful movement. Everybody could get on board. Everybody could use the hashtag. I believed in the idea of investment, not charity. So I wanted to showcase a particular kind of curated element of bush business. And I felt that, that you know, raising that kind of bush brand up is positive for everybody oh, so it's quite deliberate about that but um there was huge flow on effect and i think yeah i think really if it was commercial early on it wouldn't have got the traction wouldn't have got the pr but it, it needs to now become sustainable really for all yes. of us to keep engaging that's with right that because we want to keep doing i want to keep going and visiting by the bush and finding all these new places great and I want good you to good i keep want you to curate, yeah curate <laughs> content for me and i I, I, you know, you have yeah. four children to feed. And <laughs> yes, no, exactly. Um, so, you know, you, yeah, well, it's you know, I'm excited about the next phase and I, good. yeah. I, yeah, I think it, you're right. And that's, that's exactly right. If it were, if I were, it, if it was a not-for-profit, it wouldn't have the legs. That, no, so I need okay. to. It won't be here in a couple of years and we'll go, wasn't that nice? Exactly. <laughs> that exactly. That that I, that, oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah, I hope, it, I really want this to be, I mean, I think there is, it's proof that there is commercial appeal for this. I think the bush has a, an incredible story to kind of sell and there's money in it. And um, in order for, buy from the, you know, for, for those individual businesses to benefit long-term and communities to benefit long-term, I think our organisation needs to absolutely kind of um, be sustainable and, and self-sustainable. So I've got plans for that. And I, I yeah, think, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a, um, a shift in pace and, and a shift in mindset, trying to consolidate the traction that we've just had and, and find our new direction in terms of how we continue to be a gateway for people to connect with Bush well, Business. Well, I mean, that, that probably leads into the fact that you've got a new idea well, it's not yeah. that new. It's been around for a little while, but yeah, exactly. stay in the bush. Yeah. I mean, that what inspired? I mean, I can yeah. What yeah. inspired that? Um, well, people inspire. I mean, well, feedback in fact, inspired we can't that. Go anywhere. It's my time. No, well, this is the so stay in the bush is an Instagram account that showcases accommodation offerings, as you know. Yes. But and that was just kind of ticking along as a 
sister page to uh, to buy from the bush because people wanted to support yeah. rural communities and then the bushfires happened and there was even a gr like a greater appetite to wander out and support, you know spend some time there spend some money there um and again for me it's about that big picture trying to showcase the layers of what's available in rural communities yeah. it's like you know you can get lux bnbs and five star experiences and camping on a creek bed you know whatever tickles your fancy but um yeah and then lockdown and i was thinking oh bugger this this nobody's going to care about the drought we're in lockdown but actually it's funny how things evolve and we can only do domestic tourism and so why not let's go to the bush like stay in the bush so yeah we launched a website and it's just a directory service for people to find beautiful stays in the bush and if you're thinking rural then you can come to stay in the bush and explore oh and i just love that post you did a post and where you sort of were like oh melbourne you know if only we could lend you our beautiful skies and wide open spaces for you to run in i just thought it was such a well, you know, lovely kind of yeah i think part of like maybe we haven't touched on that that what drove me also was that bringing together city and country because yes. there's a lot made of the divide yes and i just don't think i mean maybe psychologically i think when you live in a country town um i think your your uh, opinion of people in the city can be quite limited like you know yeah. you, you think they don't give it. yeah but i actually think like, oh, i actually think less so like having grown up in the city my my opinion is that people in the city love the bush and they care about it mm, and they're yeah, kind of really fond of like yeah. nostalgia like there's this great nostalgia um they don't necessarily know i, I think they have a really 2d opinion you know they don't know the nuance they don't necessarily yeah. know um the incredible sophisticated yeah, yeah, yeah exactly offerings that are out here um so but we'll be moving here soon hopefully yeah well, that's what's happening <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think like why not just pick up audience. your job and come to the bush that's yeah. what i say that's right i've got a, a cousin in real estate in a small country town and he said he's never had so many phone calls from people who are thinking well hang on a minute like we can work remotely yeah um let's do it so, yeah. well we're I having think a great life in the bush there's got to be exactly. some what, what do you think the silver linings of this very messy horrible year is going to be Oh, great question. I think there's opportunities. As an entrepreneur, I think there's opportunities everywhere. I think if you're agile um, and not too kind of caught in, in what you're missing out on, I think there's great things to be gained. Um, and, yeah, for the bush, I think we're on the cusp of something really incredible. Like the, we, we've got this new audience to appeal to and we just need to tell a really good story and sell a really good product. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about a good yarn. Yeah. Well, Grace, thank you so much. I think it was about six months ago I first, well, it was just after I'd watched you actually do the nation, the Australia Day address to the nation. <laughs> and I remember sitting in my little home office on the farm by myself in the middle of the night and I stood with the crowd oh, and tears geez. down my eyes, you know, standing ovation, oh. um, instant girl crush. And I think <laughs> I told you that the first time I saw you and I just saw you go, oh, who is this oh, girl? As if, as if. <laughs> who oh is this God. girl having a girl crush on me? No. But my girl crush stays strong. So oh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks and for thank having you me. thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Awesome.